well. Cool, so here we are at our first lesson. We decided we were going to play around the 10th fret. That said, when I first wrote out this uh, pentatonic scale, um, and I'm going to be saying things like stop and try and, and do that, I mean, at home later. Um, we were at the 5th fret, just because it's kind of more of a comfortable spot on the instrument. So whether you're on your electric or your acoustic right now, I want you to just go through this thing, the very first line, A minor pentatonic number one not worrying about your right hand, the down-up stuff we'll include in a second, not worrying about rhythm, don't turn scales into songs, we're not playing something that goes, I am playing a song, no, we're just going, this is the first time I'm showing myself a hand movement, I'm going to do a million times, so pause whenever you need to. And yeah, if the task was just do this, we would totally use our pinky finger there, but it's because we can't, we're not meant to be the inventor of the pinky bend. There'll be times where we do use our pinky there, but we would never use our ring finger here, because you know, essentially things we tend to do down here are single note versus up on these strings, where we tend to be doing high, highly nuanced stuff with buttons. Anyway, so just go through your scale, just trying to get up to the top. Everybody wants to come right back down the first time they do that. Totally don't. Reset your mental Nintendo, do the same shit again until it starts to have an ease to it. It's probably just going to be two to four more times than you'd naturally be inclined to do it before starting to come back down. But, you know, so it's like, this is just how muscle memory is formed, ideally. And it's not like you have to do it 52 times, but if you just do it a couple more times. So I actually want it to be feeling somewhat natural. And then when you get to here, you come back down the pattern. So, you know, at home now, just get all kinds of comfortable with that. Pause. You're focusing on your left hand. Having done that, now we're going to start to think about alternate picking. Uh, for this lesson, I'm going to encourage you to just make a relaxed fist, like when you're playing rhythm guitar, um, and think of everything we're doing as little strums. We're playing primarily single notes stuff here today, but it's that we want to take an approach where if we're playing single note stuff in the middle, we want to be able to do that anchored in here. Uh, so, you know, if we had to pick one thing to do all the time, surprisingly it would be this as opposed to anchoring. Um, but anyway, cool. So there's that. And now you're starting to think about alternate picking for the first time in your life. You're already comfortable with the left hand part, so now you're going to be, and this is a great way to learn it because it's just two notes per string. We're literally going down up on that string. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. Down up. So just remember that like little strums analogy. Go ahead and just bang through that until it actually gets somewhat comfortable. Cool. So there's the first time you've been thinking about that when you're playing other stuff you already play. You know, maybe think about, oh, should I be alternate picking here? Um, and it's probably primarily manifested when you're on the low strings because just like by definition, if you're here, down, down, down is what feels like the only thing possible when ups, this little gimme thing. Um, so, you know, then having done this, now we're doing hammer runs on the way up, which is just picking the string once. And um, when I'm talking about a song that goes literally like that, I'm doing it in rhythm because I can. Same approach, get good at just the ascending part of the scale. Having done that, then you're going to go pull off some way back down. Not your pinky, your ring. Um, and like I was pointing out, uh, everybody kind of seesaws at first. Um, this exercise, and the reason we're doing this first and foremost, is that it sort of forces your hand with your index finger to be in position. So chances are, when you've gone to do a pull off in the past and it hasn't sounded, it wasn't that you weren't doing enough of this, it was that your index finger wasn't actually on the string yet, or whatever you know, finger you were pulling off to. So there's the good news. It's, you know, it's just, there I was making a point to go straight away from the instrument, the least tweak possible. Um, cool, so right now we're just going hammer-ons on the way up. And, you know, I'm just picking down each time now, because it's just one pick per string. Cool, so it's going to allow for there to be a step where you just do this shit like it's a list. It's way more fun to play it in rhythm, but this is just the scale we're about to do riffs. So, great, and I'll just make a note that at like 4.50 in the videos where we started talking about the riffs, um, 
Great. So we did some stuff now at the tenth fret. Just get just you know get oriented at the tenth fret. It'll be a little easier to reach your notes. Be sure that your thumb's not dragging back there. You want it to be in the same juxtaposition that it was when you were at the fifth fret. That changes when you get really far up the neck. But that's one thing that makes it feel like it's harder to play up the neck is that we're all sort of subconsciously like running up the mom in the first position. So yeah, you've just gone. I'm doing the same thing here. These are the notes I'm likely to hit. Cool. So our first riff was, and we're doing this bend there, which is all three of your fingers and your thumb here pushing up like a motherfucker. And then two notes like that. You know, when you think about going like here, put those together, all of a sudden you sound like Chuck Berry. But the thing we're doing today is just on the pentatonic, literally. Um, so I was like. There's the first riff, do it, pause, do it, pause, until it becomes easy, actually consciously correcting things you see yourself doing wrong. The next thing we're doing is going, pull off on the first string, and then that note on. Something we don't guess enough intuitively at first is that it'll be the same finger twice in a row. We're so like, we kind of think it'll be like seesaw, 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 seesaw the whole time. So here's us going, you know, and then rather than going to here, we're going to our index there, which is no higher degree of difficulty. It's just, you know, tends to be that if we've just done this, your subconscious would guess that we were going there next. What we're going. So, yeah, just do that a couple times. Pretty easy. And then put those two together with giant pause. And then before you move on, get where you can actually go. And there's our first two riffs. Let's make a subsection one there and decide you're going to just get all kinds of good at it before you move on. So now we're starting subsection two, which starts with our first bend on the second string. And we're going to our index on the first string. Here we're trying to bend this note to where it becomes the same pitch as the next note we're about to hit. And it doesn't work to leave your finger there. What's up? wrong if I would never do that, but here we're just trying to articulate it like single notes. And when you're doing this, it can be the world's longest pause. Anyway, so there we are. That's our first thing in this. And then our most common place to bend ever is on the third string. And this is us going. So it has to be three distinct movements. So when you're on the third string, it's the only string where you can bend up or down, and it's effective. Figure out which one's more intuitive for you. Do that one. Um, yeah, so it seemed like it was up during the lesson. So I'm bent, I've returned, I pull off, and I bend a string here. If you're doing that slowly, it's getting more difficult. So if you're getting like, like not really sounding when you go to do it at speed, it'll probably work out. Also, like the time you tried it during the lesson, you did it successfully. So, so our section two goes. So now just do that a couple times, making that big part one, big part two though. There we are. It sounds a little weird to start there, but it's cool. Putting that together with part one, we've got. So there's the, wow, now I'm actually doing something that sounds musical payoff, having maybe starting tempo. And uh, cool, so now we can see why we did it in these little sections, now you're dancing as opposed to thinking about the dance steps. And then we went, which is a little more intuitive for you. So then, you know, uh, 9, 12 in your video, we start talking about the blue scale, uh, which is throwing in this. And we're actually just playing notes right there in this next thing. Um, so just show yourself what am I talking about? We've got this thing where it's blue scale over. And then if you were to extend it to the other strings, we've got that same thing up in octave. Sometimes you'll use your pinky, but a lot of the time you'll use your ring finger twice because it keeps us in 
Well, I, I can do Ben's. I can do Slide's position. Um, cool. So at any rate, just kind of digest. There is a blue scale, having already gotten okay at. <laughs> Drift. And this is the last one on page one. Uh, the stuff that I wrote beneath that was me just explaining tablature. So that's us walking up the scale you were just playing. And now we're on the fifth string going hammer on pull off. And just pinky index pinky. So allow there to be a pause there just like the actual timing is. Everybody wants to hammer on instantly, but we're going put that together with the previous lick. Um, and before you start worrying about alternate picking, just do whatever feels intuitive, uh, and we're going to encounter that after the fact. Um, sorry, let me just do this last lick and then, uh, questions because I can't pause this. Um, cool, but the good news is that. Now we're just so was on the previous page. Now we just went and we have which is just and then now we're gonna finish off with a riff that's literally one you've already done. Which you, at this point you'll actually literally know how to do. So it'll be like and that's our solo. Goes. And you can learn it in little segments and put it together. Um, what's implied in all this is you can always do this shit. So throw on anything and solo over it. Try to do them in different orders, just like. If I were to go, you know, that was me doing the sixth riff and then the first riff, it totally sounded like playing, and that's how we're keying in on things that you can just do right away and that are going to sound cool. Um, and there you have been guitar lessons.